Hello, Mary. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Rob. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Thank you, my love. Now, you say you're very well, but I got a message off you last week saying that you fell through a plate glass window. Yep. Do you want to tell us I, about that first of all? I can't really do my hair because all around there I've got my matted stuff where they glued, they put glue on my and I don't know how long I can go before I can wash it all out again. Well, so it, you did, you properly hurt yourself then? Yeah, I, I frightened myself terribly. Okay. Um, and I still frighten myself because I've still got the broken panel there. And I, when I walk by and look at it, the size of the pieces... I think it could have killed me, Rob, if I'd been at a different angle. Right, well, I'm glad it didn't, Mary, and there are lots of people that are very, very glad that it didn't. Yeah, well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it didn't. Are you going to get somebody to remove all that glass? Yes, we're trying. I'm going to have the whole panel structure taken away because ever since we've lived there, we, it, it divides the room. But I'm just going to take it away and have a big room. Yes, because you are getting yeah. really old, aren't you? Well, in a couple of months, I'll be 91. 91, I know. And it's 10 years. I, I, you might not remember this. You might not know this. It's 10 years, almost to the day, that you and I first met. Really? When you Does came to my house? Yeah. Does it feel like 10 years? I can remember that. I was. So it, it was ten years ago that we did the National Emetophobia Awareness Day in London, which you also came to. That's right. Yes. Do I couldn't actually remember you coming to that until I looked at the pictures and saw the four of us sitting along the front there. So of course you you must have done. But yes, it's ten years yeah. since you did that. Now let me let me tell you about that and viewers that are watching this that may not have seen you before. So I was at my old house in Cambridge and I got an email and I'll try and dig it out at some point from a lady called Mary who didn't live far from me in Essex saying that she'd had a metaphobia for 75 years and that she'd been working through the manual by herself and is that okay, blah, blah, blah. And I said to you, and I emailed you back, and I said, yes, just work really hard at it, do everything, and if you get stuck on anything, you're just down the road from me, let me know, and I'll bloody well get in the car and come down and sort you out myself. Yep. Okay? And you carried on doing really well, working your way through, and then a few weeks later I got an email back saying – you're stuck on one thing, and it was a little bit of perfectionism. And I said, right, I'm getting in the car. Where do you live? And that's when I came down to see you for the first time. Yep. I won't tell people where, but in Essex somewhere. Do you remember that? I do, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you'd had emetophobia for 75 years. So Before I'm switching. I'm switching between conversations here, so I apologise, Mary, but I must mention your name to people around the world. Um, I don't want to be dramatic here. At least 10 times a week. Really? At least 10 times a week. So I either mention to someone in an email, you know, see Mary's video, remember what Mary said. Mary said this, Mary did that, Mary did that. And, and yours is still... At the moment, at least, the most watch or one of the most watch videos that we've ever had. Everybody knows mm. Mary. Okay, so the most often that I that I send your video out to people, it, uh, which I've done twice this week. One lady, I've had this for twenty two years now. I'll never be able to get over it. Yeah. My default is, well, Mary did it after seventy five years. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that is still the most remarkable, you are still the most remarkable person yeah. that's done that. 
I'm the most odd person, Rob. Odd. Yeah, you're odd. But, and and you know, I didn't. I think I introduced you as Wombat or Mary, but you 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 changed your name. You didn't do it by deed poll, but you changed your name a few years ago to Wombat. Do you want to tell people why you now call yourself Wombat? Yes, it stands for, uh, you know, I've, I've almost forgotten, uh, Wombat. Something old, merry and thriving. Now, what yeah. was it? Wily. That's it, Wily Old Mary and thriving. Yeah, Wily Old Mary alive and thriving, right? So... so Every uh, when it, Mary and I have an email exchange, she she identifies her. She now identifies as Wombat, wily old Mary, alive and thriving, which we're very very pleased to hear. And you're ninety one soon, but you're already planning your hundredth birthday. Yes, you are determined to make that century, aren't you? Well, there is a reason I do that. Is that Mom? I had a bad fall last year of February when I broke six ribs oh, and lots of my friends all rallied round and then while they looked at my ribs they found a growth in my lungs and they couldn't do anything because it almost touches my heart so everybody is getting to the stage of thinking and I am I've had it you know, two or three weeks, I'm going to be gone. And then I thought, now I've got to change. They, the friends didn't all know what to say to me. And I thought, I've got to find a way of altering, you know, what we're all doing. And I thought, yes. Uh, when I had my 90th birthday, I had about three different parties and it was good fun. And I said to them, I said, we, we can have... Plan A or Plan B. Don't have Plan A because that's the first plan. And with a company that always goes wrong, we're going to have Plan B. And I'm going to live till I'm 100 at least and I'm going to have a smash-up party. Right. So all my friends... And last week when I did my head and I was in hospital, I, I do find that... The staff like talking to me, and I think they think I'm nuts. And I started telling some of them about my 100th birthday, and they were bringing their friend nurse from another ward in. Can I invite her? So I've invited all the staff while I was there, all coming to my 100th. And where is it going to be? Where are we holding it? Well, it won't be able to be in my house because no. <laughs> it won't be room. It'll have to be somewhere very posh. You'll have to hire a local hall or something. The local what? Hall. Yeah. Something like that. You can have a disco. Yes, but I and I've got a good friend who runs dis very good discos actually. There you go. There um, you go. Sorted. Mary, do you do? You, do you realise what an inspiration you are <laughs> to people? Now, I know you don't feel like that, and I know it feels uncomfortable to be told that, okay? But you must realise that here you are, nearly 91, had all sorts of illnesses and cancers and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You've got cancer at the moment. You fell through a glass window last week and yet here you are smiling and joking about making your 100th birthday right so you are thriving personified yeah well you know why why i had a good teacher oh bless you i, I thought you were going to come up with something else then but that is remarkable you know we talk you probably remember that in most of the manuals one of the pieces of research i talk about is entitled some boring academic title like the the relevance of a control related intervention with the institutional aged right and it's basically talking about that if you've got an old old age pensioner in an old age pensioner's home and you give them a pot plant to look after just oh, to nurture yes. and feed yes. and water and talk to 
they yes. will live for up to 30 percent longer longer just, than those. yeah yes, just because they feel more powerful yeah. because they're doing something positive and empowering and they're seeing this thing grow that, that yeah. they're contributing they're doing something and because of that they feel more powerful and then they live 30 percent longer well the way you're going you're going to end up being the oldest person in the world because well, you've, got, you've got more positivity and more power than most of the people I know my age, which is 55. Mary, I need I should ask you about emetophobia, right? Because this is an emetophobia podcast and they're going to want to know about emetophobia. So 10 so years now. Let me just ask you a quick one because yes. I, I often wonder if you have thoughts on the matter. Once I sort of thought I was back in a a good thriving life again, good biometophobia, I didn't join in all your people that chat on Facebook and things. I kind of, I just thought the, the less I keep talking to people with Facebook, with Facebook, with a metaphobia, it's going to keep it in my mind. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, but because I then thought you might think that's pretty rotten. No, not at all. Very sensible. So, literally, only this morning, literally an hour ago, yeah, I'm talking to someone, I'm emailing someone about there's lots of emetophobia support groups around the world and this kind of stuff, and someone was emailing about one, and I say, I never go on them. I never go on them. I never go on them and talk about successes or research or anything at all yeah. because it tends to be quite often run by the most militant yeah. emetophobes and yeah. you just get shouted down. Yes, yeah. And, and, and abuse. So, no, the, the best thing a person can do once they're thriving and over their phobia is never speak to anyone with emetophobia ever again and that's the reason why i don't bother you very often because oh, actually yeah. actually you know i would i would i would love to there's there's loads of there's hours of conversations i would love to have with you but yeah. i'm also aware that even just talking about it yeah it is kind of unhelpful but you are you are such an inspiration literally i've never had a person that i've spoken to and I speak to lots of people every week, as you know. I've never had a person that I've spoken to when I've said, you know Mary's video with Mary, 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 Mary. No one's ever said to me, oh, no, who's this Mary woman? Everybody yeah. knows Mary. Okay, everybody knows Mary. So I've got, to ask, you, I've got to ask you a couple of metaphobia questions. A right? couple, of, okay. couple of what? Metaphobia questions. Yeah, go on. Right. So it's 10 years now. 10 years now clarify for people watching and listening has your phobia ever come back no it's not come back but some of the things with particularly the cancers and i've thought i'm gonna is this gonna bring me into a bout of sickness and then my way of dealing with that is I just think, well, if it does, it does. I mean, I, I'm, do you know I'm never sick? Yeah. I was last sick when, well, I was a bit sick with some chemotherapies, but it was nothing much. When I was 11 years old, I was in a boarding school and I threw up on the floor and there was a head girl in the dormitory and she said, Who's that? I said, it's Mary. Well, get up and clear up what you've done. I said, no, I'm not going to. Um, there can be a thought there, but genuinely, I mean, sometimes I feel very sick. And I think it's probably to do with the kidney cancer. I don't know. Yep. And, yep. and I, just, I just lay there and think, well, I feel sick. I don't like the idea of being sick. I'm not one of those people that says, 
you know, now we've got rid of it, isn't it wonderful? But I can just lay there and say, well, if I am going to be sick, I'm going to be sick. And that, do you know, and that's what 96% of the population of the world think. I don't, nobody likes being sick. You know, I, if I was going to be sick, I would prefer not to. Yeah. But you get to the point, you say, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I'll cope. And that's really important because what you're talking about is you still don't want to, but you know that you'd cope. Yeah. Um, if you remember, we've talked about that yes. before, when it was a sort of turning moment for me to sort of think perhaps I could cope. Yeah. And, um, still... and that's, on, that, that's on a recording that we did because people still talk about that and I still talk about it. And I say the turning point for Mary was – for 75 years, every day, thousands of times every day for 75 years, she thought to herself, I'd rather die. I, I could not cope with that. That would be the worst thing in the world, right? Yeah. And you turned down chemotherapy and all sorts of things because of that. And then one day you said, I know it'd be horrible, but maybe I would cope. Yeah. And that was the day you got over your emetophobia. Yeah, it was. Just t t changing your mind from it being so stressful that you couldn't cope yeah. and you'd rather avoid it, you'd rather die of cancer yeah. than yeah. have to be sick, you said to me. I used to think that. And then suddenly you, you, you calmed it down enough to say it would still be horrible, but I would cope, and boom, like the next week, it's gone. And that's, that, I would think, could be a turning point for a lot of people. I think it's a turning point for everybody, Mary. Because, because, we, because that that is the phobia, isn't it? The the phobia part of it is a person believing that they just couldn't cope. They have to avoid it. I've got to run away. It's yeah. the worst thing in the world. And when when you stop and think about it, yes, vomiting is isn't nice. But all right, it's not as bad as that. But diarrhea is not very nice. No, it's not. And I don't. I don't know anybody who's ever been frightened <laughs> of diarrhea. And you know, where do you draw? Where do you draw the line? Very good. Very good point, Mary. Very, very good point. Now, listen. I have a question that someone sent in because I told them about your birthday idea when you're 100. They said, "Is it going to be fancy dress? <laughs> what to make us all look younger?" Yeah. It, and I said I'd ask you, right? If it was to be fancy dress, Mary, yeah, what would you dress up as? A wombat. A wombat, right? And what does a wombat look like? It's is it not? It's I an Australian know. marsupial, isn't it? I did look one up once in a book. I can't really remember. There's some. I think they're a little furry creature. There's lots of things I didn't do. And do you think? People in your position, but not in your position, don't realise just what's involved. Because the first time I saw a psychiatrist in the hospital, I'm now an inmate, and he called me to his room, we were going to have a chat, and he said, what's, what is your problem? And I said, you know, fear of being sick. I said, not fear, I said, terror. Oh, come off it. Now, this is a psychiatrist going to cure me. Don't be ridiculous. She said, none of us like being sick, but nobody's frightened of it. Mm. And that was the session closed that was going to sort of send me it, back. In it, it hasn't, Mary, it hasn't, it hasn't changed much at all. Um the main psychiatrists at the Maudsley Hospital in London still yeah. say you can't be cured of emetophobia, right? Um, they still say you can't be cured of it. Um, and we see people every week. I saw a lady yesterday who who spent three months as an inpatient there. Yeah. I'm having all sorts of therapy and treatment and came out no better. And they told us she can't be cured and this kind of stuff. And I, I think that, well, as you know, most therapists doctors psychiatrists psychologists whatever just don't understand it and that's why what they do isn't helpful yeah yeah they don't they don't, they don't understand it and well, if um you, 
also I f felt eventually when I got over it that your well this is something you've mentioned anyway your fear was not vomiting your fear was a bit of being terrified mm. it was this it was such a horrible feeling to feel so frightened and I did always think that I would kill myself one day. I did try once and it didn't work. Um, and it's it's a fear of fear, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. it's just that you've attached the sick bit to it that maybe you could throw out the sick bit <laughs> and attach something else to it. Absolutely, That's yeah. So it, it, I feel sorry, and a, a friend of mine um, phoned me up about three weeks ago, and he said, Mary, there's a lady in Braintree who's put a sort of pleading story on Facebook because she's got a metaphobia. Her daughter's got a metaphobia. And the local school, they've all got, well, you know, when they're all the kids are all sick in a yeah. school. The norovirus, yeah. yeah. And she doesn't want the boy to go to school because she doesn't want him to get the virus. She's terrified. And she's a, he said that she was saying things like, I'm going to die, and you know, and he said, and perhaps here, perhaps I should have done something. He said, couldn't you contact her and sort of tell her it's all right? And I thought about it. And I thought, I can't see how I can tell her on the telephone if she's got proper emetophobia. I can't see how I'm going to get her to let the boy go to school and all these things and I didn't phone her now whether that's rotten or not I don't know Rob no, it's, um, it's difficult when, when, when parents are you know really really stressed and really really worried and don't know what to do and they're pulling their hair out like I have um, they, they, they reach out don't they and, they and and they just hope that there's something somebody can and i have this i have similar conversations you know there's, there's nothing i can do in a five minute phone call other than say you can get over this we've got yeah. a very very predictable program it's very successful you know you will you know work hard you will overcome your phobia that that's all that's all we can say to them in that situation yeah. because there isn't an immediate you know click your fingers yeah. quick fact, fix when i first got cancer i started reading books on anything like meditation anything at all that i felt would help me through the cancer and I went to a place called the Cancer Help Centre, which did teach you that there were other ways around your cancer or where well, you could make it better. And I don't know why, but my husband, dear old Edgar, he come he came home from work one day and he said, Bert at work, his wife's got breast cancer. She's terrified. And I told him that if he liked, I'd see if you'd phone her, which I did. Okay. And I then got a name for people with cancer. <laughs> I even won an award on local tele on local radio. Um, because there was more you could talk that made sense than I could have ever done with emetophobia. Yes. You know, you can say, well... There are treatments, just even the yeah. chemotherapy, but if you learn to relax, meditate, you'll find there's so you you could do this. And I won an award of gold golden girl of the week or something on Essex Radio. We, we 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 asked we asked a couple of hundred people last year, metaphobes, about 
how they saw their phobia. And the vast majority of them said either it's, it's, it feels like cancer or they said, I would rather have cancer because yeah. for the reason you said cancer seems more predictable and more understandable. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that tells a lot about what it's like to have uh, um, a better phobia, doesn't it? The, the unpredictability of it plays a massive part into it. Listen, we've got two minutes. So I've got one more question for you. It's a difficult question because I know you don't have any, right? And it's a funny question to ask, but do you have any regrets in life generally, Mary? Do you have any regrets? Yes, I do regret all the years of emetophobia. I mean, there's so many things I wouldn't do. And I, I mean, I was a girl guide and I was dead keen. And then I'd wonder if the, the food that we cooked at camp, you know, was it going to be all right? And everything that I did, the, the sick palaver would bang into it somewhere. Yeah. Now, what I don't know, Rob, is would I have come out any different or would I have just had different problems? I don't know. Yeah. But I must, must tell you that when I broke my ribs, the doctors wanted me to have a, an operation where they put a tube in and fed anaesthetic down it because they thought I wouldn't breathe. And I kept refusing because I could breathe. I've, I've read a lot about breathing. And the senior doctor that was dealing with it said to me, he said, we can't make you out. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're so bloody cheerful. Yeah. And I said, well, I, I know a man that I can thank for that. Uh, Mary, come on. Right, listen, that's, listen. You must have, I never knew you before, right? But there yeah. must have been... You must have been this, at least partly, this cheerful, buoyant, thriving person before. I suppose so. I could be cheerful. I don't know at what stage I allowed it to take me over more and more. Because I think you... you do tend, if you're not careful, to do that. Where well, maybe you were thinking, could you cope? Yeah. I think as it goes on, you you strengthen the bad feelings. Yes. That makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I, I must admit, I can remember different occasions laughing and enjoying myself. So I suppose perhaps it didn't make any difference. But I think yeah. it did, Rob, because... Yeah. I, I got on a boat with a friend of mine from college and we went to Austria at the end of the war. You know, that war had only just ended. It was all very different to travel then. And I'd got to do the boat crossing and then we were going to take a train through France and goodness knows what. And when we got to where we were, Staying, we stayed in actual chalets with Austrian people, okay. and I all I could think about for my fortnight's holiday was I'm going to have to get back on a boat again. Yeah, and you know I went, I didn't get up in the morning, and my friend said, "Is there anything wrong?" I said, "Yeah," I said, "I, I feel bad," and I made up stories. I said I'd got terrible diarrhoea, and I hadn't. And I spent virtually the fortnight in bed. Because you were worrying about the boat home. About getting on the boat to go back home again. And well, Mary, you are you are making up for those years, aren't you? Am I what? You are making up for those years by being buoyant yes. and positive and thriving yeah. now. I agree there. Yeah. And it's 
it's nice um i enjoy the fact that i don't need carers the only thing is this fall is getting them all worried except my doctor he couldn't care because he doesn't know what he doesn't know what a fall is um, right but you know i i don't want to end up having got to where i've got to and i'm, I'm yep. In, inwardly, I'll be honest, I'm quite proud that I don't... Well, you should be proud. Yeah, because there's people in my road who are nowhere near as ill as me, who I've known for years, and who are nowhere near as old as me, and they just lay in their bed all day long and get fatter and fatter. And I think, if only they would just make a bit of effort... They... Mary, I've 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 got I've got friends my age that aren't ill, okay, that yeah. that aren't anywhere near as thriving as you. Yeah. yeah? So listen, <laughs> I'm going to see you before, obviously, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, but you know, I am looking forward to your birthday party in nine years' time. Do, do you want an invitation, Rob? Of course, I want a bloody invitation. Oh, all right, I'll, I'll make sure you get one. You know that I always admire you, Rob, because I just oh. think to take that that horrible thing in hand and deal with it as you do. You, well, I, you, I, I don't really do the dealing, do I? Other people, other people have the phobia, but yeah, I, I understand what yeah. you're saying, Mary, and and myself and my team we're very you proud will thrive. of what we're doing what would we're I achieving with people there? in other words would i still be in in a metaphobia i think it's i think i would yeah and it, you you that's a good question yeah 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 well let's, um, let's just be let's just be Great. How did you hear about it anyway? I think it's just every now and again I'd sort of search the internet. And I think it's when I saw your book. Okay. And on my attitude by then, I'd seen so many psychiatrists okay. and people, was that I had to be careful because if you paid money, you quite likely weren't going to get anything. And I saw the book and I thought, well, I can afford to lose 25 yeah. quid or whatever. So we'll get the book. And then when I started to read the book, I immediately could see things there that nobody in psychiatry before had ever mentioned or anything. And I could see your book to me held a big possibility and then of course when you <laughs> turned up at my house that day I thought that was good of you to just drop round on somebody but yeah well it Mary it, you know right it, it matters to us it, it matters to us, and, and we are still, as far as we can tell, the only genuine, predictable cure for metaphobia. So I, so I feel, in a in a positive way, I feel a a, a burden yeah. Yeah. with that, right? Because if because if I'm not going to pop round and see you, who is? So that and, and that's why yes. we spend so much effort and so much time on the metaphobia side of the Thrive program because nobody well, else is going to do that. Nobody else is going to help people over the phone because nobody else now seems to be able to. In what was then called a mental hospital, not a psychiatric one. Yeah, just for clarity, Mary. Mary, just for clarity, in case anyone takes this the wrong way, you were an inpatient. Well, it, no, you weren't an it inmate. Inmates like are in prison. prison. Because okay, you weren't sectioned, I've, were you? I, they'd made me go to lunch oh, on well, the ward, done. and I was feeling rotten and I didn't want to go to lunch. 
So I nipped up when the, when the nurses weren't looking and I laid on my bed. The next thing is the matron on the ward was holding me down and telling the others to hit me. And I ran. I managed to get off the bed and I ran out into the grounds and bumped in to a doctor there who I liked very much, a very quiet chap. And he he took me somewhere, there was a little hut place in the grounds and had a chat and Although I was nothing to do with him, my ward wasn't. But he went to my ward and he said to the matron of the ward, I had permission to not sit at the table with a meal whenever I wanted. And he really had a go at her. But yeah, they were... <laughs> hmm? How long ago were you in that hospital, be... Mary? How long ago was this in this hospital? Early nineteen fifties, I should think. Wallingham Park Hospital. Crikey! And what was the name of the hospital? Do you remember? I think it was in there six. I'm not sure. Well, Wallingham Park Hospital. It had all types of patient there. Okay. Um. And do yeah. I remember correctly, did you once tell me that they gave you electric yeah. shock treatment? Well, they, you see, they didn't... For they emetophobia. They talked about the sickness as though that was a problem. Bless you, Mary. Well, listen, you, 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 know, you know that you have had such a significant influence on people's lives, yourself, you know, and the videos that we've done previously thousands upon thousands upon thousands of times they've been watched and every single emetophobe that goes through the program watches those religiously because it's the most inspiring story of all isn't it you know people say i've had it for three years i've had it for six months i've had it for 10 years it's impossible we say well mary had it for 75 and was an inpatient not an inmate, an inpatient in hospital undergoing years and years of therapy and electric shock treatment and all sorts of horrible stuff. But she still got over it in six weeks. Mary, darling, one back. Lovely to see you, as always. I will be there at your 100th birthday. Okay, but obviously going to see you before that. But for now, thank you very, very much again for joining us because... Uh, the the you know as I've said these videos are a great inspiration to sufferers watching them and it's really really helpful so lovely to see you and thank you very much.